Hi guys, you may recognize me from Netflix's Queer Eye. I'm gonna be decorating a cookie and I'm gonna try to make it look like me. I love a peanut butter cookie. So I'm gonna use a peanut butter cookie. So first thing I'm gonna do is start with the hair because that's the thing I'm most excited about. My skills will definitely not help me in this situation because I'm not a good decorator and I get very distracted. My ADD is kicking in in a very intense way because there's so much going on in front of me right now. I need something for the hair to stick with. So I'm gonna put on a nice little base here. Queer Eye is basically five men who go in and help, for the most part, unsuspecting heroes figure out how they can make their lives better in, in a week, in a short amount of time. We help women, we help men, we help people from all different types of ethnicities, and I just try to lead with a lot of questions and figure out how I can best be of service in a short amount of time. This hair is not turning out the way that I thought it was going to. I would just like to preface it with that. Three X's have referred to me as a gremlin when I wake up in the morning. So that's kind of what the aesthetic is gonna be. This is gonna be Morning Antony. There was one hero who I was, I wouldn't say concerned, but I was concerned with, but it was Corey, season one. He's such a sweetheart. And, and he's really turned it around because he actually sends me dishes that he prepares for his family now, um, for his wife and his kids. I used to cook so much more. And now when I travel, I'm not, I don't have access to a kitchen. But I'm really excited whenever I'm in New York and I'm visiting home because I've started this tradition of having dinner parties. So I invite friends who I haven't seen in a long time and I kind of put people together. Often there's sort of like the fear that it's gonna be a really awkward situation because no one really knows each other, but I kind of get off on the awkwardness. I really like uncomfortability. So I get to host little dinners at my house whenever I'm in town. This cookie, strange to say, is actually a little more aspirational, at least in the hair department. Lips. So glad they're not cinnamon. I love cinnamon, but I don't like cinnamon and candy. It's like ketchup on a hot dog. It just doesn't make sense. Oh my gosh, I'm so beautiful. When I visit my dad in Vermont, he has this old um, crepe pan that he's had for like decades. It's a nonstick, it's like a Teflon, and it's definitely scratchy, and definitely dangerous, but it doesn't matter because it's his and he makes me crepes, and he'll make paper-thin crepes with the best maple syrup ever, and he'll take fresh blueberries, and then sometimes he'll just hand whip a little bit of cream, and we'll have that with just some crispy bacon on the side, and then some crispy eggs, and that's like the ultimate breakfast. And that's when I let myself have coffee with heavy cream, and I'll go through like a whole pot of coffee with heavy cream. I'm giving myself a more angular face. This is not a reflection of my cookbook. I would just like to say I had that thought. There's no cookie decorating involved in the cookbook. Um, so it's called Antony in the Kitchen. It's a book um, that's very personal. It, it, it was actually a lot more of a personal process than I thought it was gonna be. It was really autobiographical because I basically did a um, hundred recipes and it's sort of throughout the course of my life of food that I had at my parents' cocktail parties when I was a little kid to my Polish heritage to when I was a broke student and I had like $10 meals that I had to make, to dishes that I prepare now, to things that didn't make it on Queer Eye, to just food from different um, ethnicities and cultures that I had growing up when I was in Montreal. It's kind of like this nice plethora, if you will, like a mix of different things. There's always like a personal story to the dishes that sort of shape us and things that we remember from childhood or a trip that we took with a significant other or anything that was important. And that's kind of like what my, what my mission is with the book is to show people that we all have our own food story and we all have those, those sacred recipes. So I asked, Ted Allen to write my foreword. I worked for Ted for almost two years. I was his personal assistant and I would cook for him and I worked for his husband's side of the business. I had no idea that I was ever gonna do what Ted did. It makes me emotional because it's like he was preparing me for the career that I had now and I didn't even know it. And, and he, was, he was really important to me because he's somebody who is not a classically trained chef. He's someone who's incredibly passionate about food. He's a journalist and I love journalists. And then when he agreed to write my foreword and I read the foreword the first time, I was not caffeinated and I was a crying mess. He's just the, he's the sweetest man ever and has just been so incredibly supportive. Not sure why I'm putting these on here, but I'm gonna add a little bit of sparkle. I think it kind of looks like me already. We're kind of getting there. I'm gonna have a blue body. So why I'm adding a body is because I love my bracelets and my jewelry. That, that did not work out at all the way I thought it would. But you know what, we have rings. We have colorful rings that we're gonna put right here. Oh, I need eyebrows. I have massive eyebrows. I'm gonna pay an homage to my older self. I was actually born with a diastema, which is a gap between your teeth, but it wasn't a perfect one like Madonna or David Letterman. It was kind of like this. So I was very sensitive about it. 
And then one of my closest friends, Jen Plotnik, she fixed my, fixed my diastema and she just added a bit of like a resin bonding. So I didn't have veneers where you have like, you know, the vampire chiclet teeth. So I'm gonna give myself the gap that I used to have. I kind of want to bring the gap back. I think I will. Oh my gosh, and I have my CC, my Cindy Crawford um, spot. It's here. So that, yeah, I put it on the wrong side. There you go. I think I nailed it. It's basically a photograph of me. Oh my, I have never looked better. It's not Antony unless I have my best friend with me. And my best friend is a little floofy floof with floppy ears. Oh, it's gonna be scarier in a second. <laughs> Most terrifying corgi I've ever seen. <laughs> An Antony cookie is best paired with a beautiful little young, very vibrant, terrifying looking corgi. And also I'm gonna add another thing, a cup of black iced coffee. Me walking down the street with a corgi and a black iced coffee. Yeah, that's me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this didn't feel like a complete waste of time. Um, Queer Eye season four is out now on Netflix. You can buy Antony in the Kitchen. It's out now wherever books are sold. I want everyone to just sort of look at the book and sort of see that we all have our own version of that and start thinking about your own life and like recipes that have shaped you and like food that you remember that makes you feel good or loved or safe and people that you wanna share that with. If you enjoy this video as much as I did, please check out the YouTube channel to see other celebs and public people make their own versions of their faces.